Okay, so making tax digital. So I'll just start off, except for communications from Mitchell Meredith, has anyone heard anything in the media or anything regarding making tax digital? No, good, right. These next couple of slides are really gonna show how good HMRC are then. So this slide is, according to HMRC, what making tax digital is. So making tax digital, <coughs> is a key part of the government's plan to make it easier for individuals and businesses to get their tax right and keep on top of their tax affairs. So, it's good, um, good advancement maybe. And then it goes on to say, so HMR's ambition is to become one of the most digitally advanced tax administrations in the world. Making tax digital is making fundamental changes to the way the tax system works, transforming tax administration so that it is more effective, more efficient, and easier for taxpayers to get their tax right. Um, I'm not quite sure whether it is easier because I think a lot of people think that the, the new rules are going to be a burden um, on them. But I think for a business, um, it is going to make things better in terms of the information that you can get for your business and, and looking ahead for things. So, um, bearing on that point of nobody's really heard of Making Tax Digital, Making Tax Digital was first announced in 2015 um, and the government looked to completely overhaul the tax system um, and the plan was to have it done by 2020. So we're in 2018 and nothing's actually happened yet. Um, and it, it encompassed all tax then, um, income tax, corporation tax, VAT. It's been amended in 2017 to only cover um, businesses above the VAT threshold, so VAT registered um, <coughs> businesses. And um, it passed through Parliament in February 2018. So it is happening now, it's, it's there. Um, on, I think it was the 16th of October, HMRC um, amended the plan slightly, so um, more complicated businesses, I'll get, get on to what those are, um, it's been delayed by six months for them, so they're starting October 2019, but um, for all other VAT registered businesses it starts from April 2019, so it's your first VAT quarter after, so if you're if you've got a quarter ending in March, your first return under the new regulations will be June. But if it ends, if your VAT quarter ends in April, the first one under the new regulations, you won't have to do one month. It will be your next quarter, so it will be your quarter end in July. Um, and then obviously the next one, if your quarter ends in May, it will be uh, August. Um, so that's that. So yeah, it's starting for everyone April 29. Complicated October 29. Non-VAT potentially starting April 2020. So anyone who's not VAT registered, it, it is coming in for all businesses, so, which is a big change because previously we've you've only had to report annually. So that's a big change. And then for the rest of the tax, income tax, corporation tax, it is, it is coming in and we, we foresee that it will be done quarterly um, again. So, what we got now? so these are the regulations. So this is from the, um, the document that was submitted to Parliament in February. So I'll just, I'll just read it out. Uh, a VAT registered taxpayer is obligated to, no, obliged to keep and maintain accounts preserve records and render records. All VAT registered taxpayers are required to render returns using an electronic return system unless they fall within specified exemptions. The effect of these regulations is to impose an obligation on registered taxpayers to keep and maintain, um, no, to maintain and preserve an electronic account containing specified information using a defined form of software which is functional compatible software. If taxpayers are subject to that obligation, they must also render electronic returns using a functional compatible software. So I think everyone understands exactly what that says. Um, it's quite clear. Obviously, the first element is there's no change there. 
So um, what are the changes? So to break it down, your records must be kept um, recorded in an electronic format. Um, and they must be submitted through compatible software. So um, I don't believe you can't submit fact returns on paper anymore, can you? No. So that's outlawed. But at the moment, you log into the HMRC's government gateway, type in your figures, and do it. So from April 2019, we foresee that that, that option won't be there. Um, so it will have to go through the software. So they want a direct link between the software and, and them. Um, and another difference is, so previously you just submit six figures. They're now dictating the way um, in which you do it. So for each supply, you must state the time of supply, the value of the supply, and the rate of the VAT charges. Um, and then that's the same also for each supply received. So it's the time of supply, the value of the supply, um, and the total amount of input tax for which credit is allowed. So slight changes there. Um, and where, where that will really impact on people is um, things like restaurants and shops. Because um, often now, uh, can you click backspace, the delete button? Not the delete button, the other delete button. That one. Yeah. Yeah, do it again. There. Um, is weekly and daily takings. So if anyone keeps records of weekly or daily takings, unfortunately, you won't be allowed to do that anymore because we need the, the date of supply. So a lot of times, especially retail businesses, they just go, well, this is, this is the takings from the week. You won't be able to do that anymore. Um, so that's one, one big change which will add a lot more complexity because obviously you'll have 30, 31 days of records as opposed to four or five. Um, and another big thing, it's taxable turnover. So the regulations <coughs> only apply to VAT registered businesses with a taxable turnover over the VAT threshold. So if your turnover is not £85,000, but you're voluntarily um, registered, um, the, the regulations don't apply to you at the moment, but they may do. Um, likewise, if you have uh, income that's non-taxable, so for farmers' subsidies, that's not taxable. So if the subsidies takes you over the VAT threshold, you're not um, required to meet these regulations because your tax, it's all about the taxable income because subsidies are outside of the scope. Um, so, but we can discuss that with anybody and their specific needs. Um, Ta taxable afterwards. in these terms means subsidies yes. to... VAT. <coughs> yeah. Um, so the delay for the complex en entities. So just to, I'm pretty sure we haven't got any of these in the room, but just to make sure nobody says, oh, it's delayed for me. So they are um, entities which fall into the following. So trusts, not for profit organizations that are not set up as a company, VAT divisions, VAT groups public sector entities required to provide additional information on their VAT return, uh, local authorities, public corporations, traders based overseas, those required to make payments on account, and annual accounting scheme users, which unfortunately to me, I believe this is a little bit of, well, the small business gets hit first, who probably don't have as many resources as the larger businesses, which are public corporations, VAT divisions, but it's about the complexity of the business. So um, HMRC have been running a, a pilot um, with about 200 businesses, both agents like ourselves and um, businesses, running the pilot, making it through, and it's now open. But they're gradually, the more complex businesses are gradually being added to that pilot, and that's, that's why they've been, they've been deferred. So exemptions, um, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, how do I get out of this? Um, so obviously, if you, don't, if you don't have the taxable turnover of 85,000, but the exemptions are very narrow, um, and the exact parameters haven't been published, but this is what the, um, 
document that was submitted to Parliament says. Those who the commissioners are satisfied is a practising member of a religious society or order whose beliefs are incompatible with use of electronic communications. Those for whom the commissioners are satisfied that is not reasonably practical to make a return using a compatible software return system for returns of disability, age, remoteness of, of location or any other reason. Also, those who are in insolvency procedure may be exempt. So, obviously it talks about disability, age, remoteness, but it gives no parameters to give those. And our sort of feelings are that if you, if you say that, oh, I'm, I'm too old to, to do this, they, they will come back and go, well, you've got an agent, so you can get your agent to do it. So I think you're going to have to have pretty exceptional circumstances to be able to find an exemption um, because this is this is something they want to bring in and they want to bring it forwards as well they're really it's going to be really narrow the, the exemptions um, elections to not be exempt if you are um, VAT registered but your um, taxable turnover is below the 85,000 you can elect to have the rules apply to you. Um, I'm not quite sure why you would, because you can still follow the exact same system, um, but the rules won't apply to you, but you can still, and I think it's advisable to <coughs> do it earlier rather than later, because we expect that a year after that all VAT registered businesses, so April 2020, we expect that all VAT registered businesses will have to do this. Um, Tim's pulling a face there. Do you agree with me? <laughs> okay, that's all right then. Okay. Um, so we are advising clients that you know, it, it is going to happen, so you're better being ahead of the game and making sure that you've got everything in place and running smoothly rather than waiting. So the software. Um, so it has to be submitted through functional compatible software. So there's currently 24 compatible software options available. Um, this is, uh, so all compatible software has to go through HMRC's testing. So you can't just get any accounting software. It has to be one that has been verified by HMRC. And there's another 60 in development. Um, they vary in complexity um, and design for size of business and everything. Um, so there's lots of options out there. We've got a couple of recommended that I'll, um, I'll point out in a minute. So will spreadsheets be compatible? Um, I'm sure lots of people use spreadsheets now, and the answer is both yes and no. Um, so nice and easy there. Spreadsheets by themselves will not be compatible because it has to have that link, that direct link with HMRC. Um, anybody who's good with computers and things like that, there's something called, um, H uh, there's a API, so that's the link. So there's there will be, bridging software, which is in part, is in part of these, um, that will be available. Um, it varies in price. Some of them are cheap, um, but we don't think it's a long-term solution because HMRC are going to acquire more information. Um, so it's not a long-term solution to this. And the efficiency gains and the information that you can get out from the fully-fledged accounting software um, is far superior to anything that you can get out of the Excel spreadsheets. Um, so, but for some people, it 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 will it will suit them better. And we haven't been able to identify. Unfortunately, the bridging software has, is coming out very late because people are still developing it because it's the smaller um, smaller software um, publishers that are producing this. So they're their time scales are slightly slightly less than the, the software that's already out there and just had to make a few, a few changes. Um, so, yeah, um, oh, and then, so the benefits of using the fully fledged um, accounting software rather, rather than the um, bridging software. So like I said, the efficiency gains, um, there's the real time view of your business and the position. And another really key one, I, I, I believe, is the ability for an advisor to look at the data live within the software. So I'll talk about um, especially one of them, 
uh, we can connect in live to your software and see exactly what you see in real time and any changes we make or you make show up in real time. So the, the, that connection between the accountant and the, the business owner or the bookkeeper it, it's far more beneficial and, and the support we can, we can give and the advice from that um, is really, it goes a lot further. So our two recommended software is Xero and Sage. Um, so Xero is slightly newer company, um, well, a lot newer actually, um, and is focused completely on cloud accounting software. So um, there's no software to download to your computer, use it over the internet. Sage, um, traditional, I'm sure <coughs> quite a few people in the room have used Sage or have heard of Sage over the years. And um, Sage builds software from that deals with small businesses right up to large businesses. And I know lots of people have been very happy with it for a long time. Um, Xero has shown itself to be the market leader in terms of uh, cloud accounting software. It's really made massive gains um, within the UK. Um, well, worldwide, actually. It's a New Zealand company, um, but they've expanded and they really, we think it's a really good piece of software. Um, so I'll just give you a few few bits. So we've been a Xero partner since 2014. Um, we're a Xero Gold partner. So uh, depending on the amount of um, businesses that you have using, your software, your partner levels differ. And then we also, by being a Gold partner, we have access to a wider variety of options. Um, so as I said, it's cloud accounting, so it's completely in the cloud. So that, that's how we can connect live to it. And it means that you can connect and check anything um, anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Prices start from £10 plus VAT. Um, if you go onto Xero's website, I think there's about three or four different options that sh they show you. Um, so it starts at £10 a month, and then I think it's £22. I think it's three options. Then it's £22 a month or £27 a month plus VAT. Um, we have more options than that, and we do have um, discounts available uh, through being a Zero Gold partner that we can add. Um, there's hundreds of add-ons available on the Zero app marketplace, from things from connecting your point of sale system, booking software, um, credit control. There are hundreds. So there's. Um, it's not just its standalone software. There's a lot that you can add in that can really help save time, efficiency gains, um, and really help you. There's a, a Zero app um, for Apple and Android um, that I can give you a quick demo of after so that if you're um, out and about and you want to just raise an invoice, instead of writing it in an invoice book, you just type a couple of things in on your phone and it gets sent straight out direct. So that that's good. and. We feel it's good for people. So Sage, we've been a Sage partner for 20 years, um, I believe. I wasn't about back then, so I've had to take a stab, but I've been told it's that long. Um, and we're a Sage Platinum partner, and we've been a um, Sage Platinum partner with Sage for a long time. Um, we've used it on a lot of people. Um, desktop accounting software. So it, it does have a cloud um, software package. Um, but w we don't feel it is up to the same standards as Zero, so we don't recommend that people use it because if people want to go for a cloud-based option, we recommend that Zero is the best way to go. Um, prices again start from ten pounds plus VAT, but Sage it can the prices can go up rapid um, to sixty, one hundred and sixty pounds per month for the software, depending on what you need. Obviously, that's for the more complex and larger businesses. Um, but it, it, the and Sage is a little bit more, its packages go, well, this is what's in the package. You can't take anything out. So there will be things included in there that y you won't need, which is where Xero comes in with its, its add-ons. Um, if, if you don't need that element, you don't have to buy it. Um, there are add-ons available um, for some packages of Sage. One key thing is that the old versions of Sage won't be compatible with MTD. Um, as they're desktop, um, they're not. So 
and it, it gets even more complicated. So version 24 and onwards is compatible as long as you're on a subscription model so that you pay monthly. If you pay annually or you've paid a one-off price, it's not compatible and you'll have to pay for an add-on, which I think the price is 20 pounds a month plus VAT. So the same price as other software. Um, so, got some more. How can Mitch and Rediff help you? So, um, we can supply the advice regarding which software is best for your business, because obviously I've discussed the two software options that we're recommending to people. Um, there are others out there, and some people have found specific ones that suit their needs. Um, but these are our two, but we can help you find, find that out. Um, and we can help you then with the supply um, and setup of that package to make sure that you're all up and running and everything's in place so that come the day that you start, you just have to go straight, sh straight in with it. And as I say, some, we do have discounted prices available through us for, for some packages. Um, uh, yeah, just checking. Um, we could also maintain your records and complete returns on your behalf, either on a quarterly or monthly basis. If you decide that this is too complicated for yourselves, we can sit down, have a discussion, and say, well, we can do this, and we can even do parts. Um, so for example, you can, do, you can continue to do your invoicing and everything like that and put it onto the software. We can compile the bank recs and do all those elements, so make sure everything's all right and sign it off. You know, make sure everything, check everything through before it gets sent off to HMRC, because that's, that is the one um, element of what, we do, what the rule changes are now, is that instead of those, that's those six, eight boxes sent off to HMRC, so you just typed in on a computer, there's going to be more information and going on, they're going to be able to, we imagine that they're going to be looking to take more information. So if you make a mistake, it's going to be more difficult to sort it out. Whereas now, if you make a mistake, we can help sort it out when it comes <coughs> to the accounts or when we have a, like a quarterly or six monthly review. So is that we can also offer training and support. We've been offering training on Sage for over five years now. Um, and we have our dedicated Sage um, and Zero trainer who's based out of our Bracken office but can do work remotely um, with you through taking over your computer or they can come and visit you. And she's, she's really good. I, a, lot, a lot of people have had um, training with her um, over the last five to 10 years and um, they're all working through it well now. And I think, I'll just check my notes. <coughs> I think that's all I've got 